Amy. Hi, I'm Gemma. From Play to Learn Preschool. Thanks for joining us. It's been a little while since we've done one of these. <laughs> when we were um, in our groove at the beginning of the school year, every Friday, well, it's October 2. We did it in October 2. We did it September, October. November threw us off, but on Friday afternoons, well, we... Well, November, we knew it was going to be crazy because we were going away. We went away. We're back. We're back. We can't find the light, so we look a bit tired. Tired. Anyway, on Friday afternoons after the students leave, we always set up our centers for the week. We have been doing this for 13 years, so at this point in our tenure, um, we are able to sort of plan it out or map it out, I guess is a better word, um, for the year. So we're calling this week December, but it's really still November. Um, and we change out our dramatic play, we rotate uh, materials and toys through the block center, change our sensory bin. Um, anyway, it's Tuesday. But we're gonna be was ready yesterday, but I don't know why we didn't. Oh, because I had all this big voice. Oh yeah, yeah. It was just yesterday. Yeah. Anyway, we are gonna pretend like it's Friday afternoon and we are going to give you a little tour of the centers that we have set up for this week of school. Your exploring stuff is on the way. Yay! Yeah, Erica said thank you for introducing them to exploring. Oh, happy aren't they too. awesome? The kids love our little wooden puzzles and all the toys we've brought back for them. So, yay, I'm glad you guys found them too. What a good find, huh? Okay, so we are going to kind of just give you a tour around our classroom. Um, our dramatic play is not ready. We're, we bumped that to next week. See, that's the thing about this. This is a plan. Our <laughs> ideas, what we want to do. But sometimes things change and you have to change it up. Like I didn't feel like spending my Thanksgiving break setting up a post office. I don't know why I thought I would. <laughs> anyway, we're going to do it for next week. So we do make changes. Um, you can see here I cross things out. Uh, there's a lot of crossing out. We just change it. And our theme for December is winter because we like to introduce to the students how to uh, put on their winter clothes and, you know, get them... Um, you know, get themselves dressed in mittens and hats, but of course, it's like 60 degrees today. So, <laughs> so we made them put their coats on anyway, because they're like, you got coats, put your coats on. Your mom said a coat, we get you wear your like, coat. I have Someone this has like a woolly hat that they're wearing, but we don't need to wear that. Sweat dripping on their faces. Anyway, um, so some of the centers, like our science center, we were going to do a winter theme, um, but listen, it's not winter yet. So it's impossible it's, to talk about things that haven't happened yet. We're hoping the weatherman says that it's going to happen, but anyway, we well, let's hope. So like you'll see in our plans that it's supposed to be a winter exploration of the science center, but we thought that's really silly because the kids are like, winter, huh? They don't remember it because we don't really have much snow last year, so they probably don't really remember what. So we're holding off. So we just, we're flexible and we try to meet the students um, with what they're seeing and doing and we wing it sometimes. That's the truth. We do not do a presentation for Christmas. We have a little PJ and cookie party for the kids. We do not do a Christmas presentation. We have because the parents are out shopping. They don't want to come for Christmas. Partly that. And we have like a tiny little class. Yeah. And so um, what happens when you have a tiny little class and you bring in a dozen parents is the kids act weird. Mm. They do because they're intimidated. And they're already excited about Christmas, so yeah. it's not something that we really we're just not well suited for it. So we do have the parents in for different things, but we don't have a presentation, so. Okay, yes, I will leave, um, Brianna, I will leave links for everything that we talk about up in the video description afterwards. It's easier for me to do it on my computer. I just didn't have it handy before we went live, so. Yay, all the exploring stuff is being shipped. I talked to Shrey and um, Garav the other day and they said that they had shipped everything out on, I don't know what day I talked to them. It was last week, so. I'm glad you guys are gonna get all your stuff, yay! Here it goes. Yes, here's the thing. If you do not have snow, like if you live in Arizona or something, don't do winter. You don't need to do a winter thing with snow and snowmen. Because the kids are like, what are you talking about? Let's just make believe you're talking. We're hoping that at least they will no. see snow. We probably will. We always have at least a little bit. So they they kind of know. But if you if you're not gonna have do any snow, don't do it. Yeah, do what the kids are seeing. So if they have Christmas trees at home or if um, they're going on vacation. You want to do a travel theme in Christmas time. Um, you know, do what do what the kids are interested in. So, all right, enough talking. We are going to flip the camera around, and I'll just kind of show you around. If you um, want to see anything in particular, let us know, and we will try to answer your questions in the comments. I saw um, Brianna had a question about dumping toys. 
it's you have to just keep modeling it there's no there's no real trick to it you just have to keep showing them over and over label things is really what you can do it helps us too we stop what we're doing if we're doing some nails you just stop and play with them mm -hmm. um that's the best way of the modeling yeah they still don't it's the age group it's just how it, how it is you just have to I also have to tell you that not every day, I'm sorry, I burned my hand on Thanksgiving. I tried not to show it and I just went, ah. <laughs> I've got a big scar. Um, sorry. Um, what was I just going to say? <laughs> Sidetrack because I, I wasn't going to show my hand in the video. About dumping toys. About dumping toys. Sure oh, remember. but not every day here is perfect. We have a lot of days where we're like, gosh, you know. What can we change? What can we do better? Yeah, we have to make adjustments and changes every day, so. Um, I'll even show you one of those when we're doing a little tour. We are not perfect. It didn't even feel perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, here goes. Uh, Jem will be the preschooler. I'll be the camera lady. And let me know if you have any questions. Maybe at the yellow circle table. Okay, here goes. All right, sorry. Get a little closer to my face. So our classroom is set up. Um, the part where we are sitting over here is the. Um, it's a mess. Over here is like the snack area and the messy art, and then. The main part of our classroom is centers. So this yellow circle table is where we usually have invitations to do literacy, alphabet, um, rhyming, name work. And today we've got it split, or this we have it split as part alphabet stuff, um, which are these fine motor dots and little white, I don't know what are they, rocks. They're supposed to look like snowballs, but they're just rocks <laughs> for them to make the letters. And on the other half, Oh, you're such a smart preschooler. <laughs> on the other half of the table, we're actually working on some fine motor work with them. Yeah. So yesterday, um, they painted their sticks. Uh, Jamie's husband is amazing. Um, drilled some holes for some sticks. They're just dowel rods, but yeah. they were like a dollar twenty nine for a maybe it was like a forty eight inch dowel rod. So he just um, and we cut them into four pieces. Yeah, and then so they painted them yesterday, and then I mod punched them up so it's got like a little shine. And then today. They could add some bells. So we were just weaving the pipe cleaners and jingle bells. Now I totally stole this idea yes, from the Friends Preschool. I will leave a link to their amazing Instagram page. But we were trying to get these done ahead of our December music class. So if they so. add the big bells, it's louder. Yes. <laughs> so they're just quieter, weaving. They the top of the guinea pig is open. I know. Kids just throw. She can't escape. She's not. She a can't climber. get. It. She's not a climber. We were, the kids like to feed her at the end of the day with all their leftovers from lunch. So. <laughs> She's all good. Um, over here at the light table, we have sort of an art project, a science-y art project. So the light is off of the, um, from the table because it's too bright with the camera. Makes us look like ghosts. So here we have a book, which is too long, I think, to read cover to cover for our preschoolers, but it has some really beautiful photographs of actual snowflakes on the inside. Um, I won't be able to find one now. You of course not. Spot. This is a biography of a gentleman who was a photographer and was, I think the first, there you go. Oh, you just missed one. The okay. first, um, I think the first person to photograph snowflakes. Isn't that one right there on the black? Oh, it's an illustration. It's an illustration. Um, but in here, it's true. It's true. It's a true story. I just can't find <laughs> it now. Black. I'm on the spot. There are lots of pretty snowflakes on the sides. Anyway, we're just using it um, for them to look at the. <laughs> I've given up. I won't throw the book on the floor because I can't find it. Okay. Uh, and so we, we have, these are mosaic glass tiles and they're actually fine for our students because we know our kids really well. They don't mount the toys. And when they're standing over here at the light table, we feel really confident that A, we're supervising them and B, that they will not throw or eat these little glass beads. So they come in hexagons, rectangles. Big. They are pretty big. Um, different shapes. And so the kids can design a. This is one I did earlier. It's lovely. Thanks. Could be a stick man too. I have to do that. <laughs> They're designing snowflakes over here on the light table. They look really pretty when the light is turned on. Okay, easy enough. And then um, we like to do interactive bulletin boards at this area of our classroom because it's nice and low when um, so the kids can interact with it. So what we have here is just a number matching game. These are felt mittens from Target Dollar Spot. You could cut some out of a piece of construction paper. Yep. You can and make them yourself. You, you could, could even, these are stickers, but you could write them on. Those are number stickers, but you could totally just write them on with a Sharpie. And what I did was print blank mittens um, and staple them to the back because I want the kids to be identifying and matching the numbers. 
I'm putting them in order and they need that support at this point in the year. They're not able to like pick up 20 mittens and put them in order without the matching. So it's a number matching and counting, number identification, sequencing, and a little fine motor to boot with the, with the um, clothespins. For the month of December, at least for the first two weeks, we have instant snow in our sensory table. I did a video, or we did a video. We did a video last year. Last year about how to make instant snow. And all the different types of pretend snow. We did, so I will link to that if you'd like to rewatch all the different ways to make pretend snow. This is a polymer called Snow Wonder. It's also under the brand called Instant Snow. And what we're doing is just, it's just a sensory experience and then also fine motor. And you see Gem is using those handy scoops from Learning Resources. And that motion that she's nice snowball. <laughs> that motion that she's making with her hand is the same motion that we want our our students to make when they're using scissors. So this is like a pre-cutting activity or to strengthen their hand skills and their coordination. So super fun. All right, thanks. Oh, Brina oh, liked the, Brina liked the snow video last year. Oh yeah, thanks. I'll link to it. It's a it's a. <laughs> oh, and then we realized the ones that we probably would not use again. Yes, there's some that was the kind of a mess. I wanted, that Jamie doesn't <laughs> she said, you should know. order this, and then we get it. It's like a total disaster. Um, so if you saw in our plans, the plan this week was to do a winter investigation at the Science Center. We're just not quite ready for it because the kids just um, haven't experienced winter yet. So we put up the nuts and bolts that were scheduled for November that we didn't get to. It's a fine motor activity. It kind of falls under tinkering or like an engineering task for them to color sorting for them to match um, the nuts and bolts. So we actually have two sets. These are from Home Depot. I think they were 25 cents a piece. These are the real ones. They're like in a loose bin. You can just pick any nut and any bolt um, and they can put a whole bunch on there. Ours are all the same size, but you could mix and match sizes if you wanted to get really tricky. And um, then we also have these little toy ones. I think they're Melissa and Doug. It's like a construction set and we just pulled out the nuts and bolts. Thanks, Brianna. Hey, Kathy, we're gonna show you some of the cool stuff we got in Atlanta tomorrow. So, join us for tomorrow's uh, video. I did wanna show you, we changed a little some, that's my snowman, not the kids. Um, <laughs> I was modeling it. Um, I did wanna show you, we changed a little something different on our art easel. So we usually just have paint in pots with, um, uh, with paint brushes. Where do we get the wooden trays? Hey, they're from the Hobby Lobby. Oh, <laughs> That's our number one question on live videos. Uh, but this week we decided to teach our students kind of a new procedure for the art easel. And they have risen to the challenge, wouldn't yes, you say? The so, first, it's a two day process though. It is. So we've had them, yeah, I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to waste the paint now. Because I'm not gonna paint it. You're not? Yeah, just squirt the paint on the little um, paint distress. What do you call it? It's, it's a palette. palette. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then they can paint with it. So the first day, they put it all on there. I modeled it, I yes. should say. Yeah, Jamie modeled it exactly what to do. Put the paint on the palette, and then when you're done, you wash it off and then start again. <laughs> Um, they enjoyed that part, but they forgot to paint. They didn't actually paint a lot of pictures. They were just like squirting the paint and, and washing it off. off. <laughs> so today I was like, had to reteach it a little bit because I realized my, you know, my mistake or whatever. But we just have these little squirt bottles. You can get them at Walmart or the Container Store or wherever. Um, we fill them with paint, and there's some cups of clear water. Um, and paint palettes and brushes and black and white paper. And then they did a really good job, um, you know, just kind of painting and taking care of their art. Um, supplies when they were done washing them right here in the bathroom next door to the art easel is the bathroom so um, the thing about kids is if you uh, you know give them a challenge and give them responsibility they tend to step up to it so I'll put some video and uh, pictures of them doing that later um, on Facebook so you guys can see it but we also trade out the supplies in our block center each week so this week we put up some cup stacking very high tech this is stuff. high tech blocks those are from the dollar store. I think you get like a hundred cups for a dollar. I think I have five dollars worth and they've only broken about half of them. Yeah. Um, so they're just building snow forts, which is super fun and easy. The kids love nice pyramid. Thank they love you. to build with them or even just build like a really tall tower. Younger kids will like just cut a yeah, wall. <laughs> and then those are strips of white felt, which I feel like we, all, we got from y'all last year where yes. they can make like snow roads or snow decorations. So. And we still keep some things up from last week that they liked, or two weeks ago, so. Um, it is hard for them to keep it clean, but it's good practice, so snow forts. Exactly. I do like to put all the cups away afterwards. 
They do. They're pretty easy to clean up the snow the cups. <laughs> and we're like practicing or like preparing them for when they get to middle school and they have to do cup stacking, right? And then, you know, we change our thematic books over here in our little reading corner each, um, oh, what's going on? Each, ooh, the camera's doing a weird thing. Each uh, month or each week to kind of go with the season. So we have some snow and winter books out and we'll change it to Christmas in another couple weeks. We don't want to invite that crazy yet. At the math center, we're doing more sorting. We do a lot of color sorting and size sorting. So this one is a um, snowball size sort and they're just pieces of construction paper with three circles, large, medium, and small. The large and the medium are very close. Um, actually, I think your small is not the smallest one. <laughs> and so they can just sort the little snowballs into uh, three groups, large, medium, and small. So they really like that. It's kind of a sensory, you know, sensory and center. The and they will throw them like snowballs. And so okay. ask us how we know that. And then they just pick them up again, <laughs> if we're lucky. So that's just about all we have set up um, in our classroom for this week. Let me put you back. Ooh, sorry, I didn't get a close up of my face. Um, ooh, sorry. So anyway, um, like we said though, we're trying to meet the needs of the kids. They're really excited about, <laughs> they're really excited about Christmas um, and they know winter's coming, but we don't actually have snow on the ground yet or they're not really wearing their winter clothes. So we're winging it, but it works. <laughs> We've been doing this a really long time, so it's not. We're doing also a lot of art, which I'll share with you next week. Um, we'll do one on like good process art for Christmas time and gifts. Um, so we're just, I don't know, we're just doing the most important thing, which is having a good relationship with our students, playing. getting down on the floor, playing with them, um, loving on them, reading to them. And if you don't achieve everything on your plan, which we often don't, it's okay. <laughs> so that's that. Thank you guys for joining us this afternoon. Tomorrow we are gonna to share some of our favorite finds from the NACI Expo Hall. We bought um, some more- Everything. No, we didn't. <laughs> Buy everything. I might put on my magic massager. <laughs> I'm teasing. And we have a giveaway for you tomorrow as well. So be sure to tune in and we hope to see you guys back, to, back in tomorrow. You already did your winter thing in Rwanda. We're still in the 70s or 80s. It can be done. It can be. I just prefer to wait till there's a little bit of snow. <laughs> or at least cold. Something. Something so they're like, what do you mean winter? It still looks like fall outside. Mm. Yes, I. you still do winter theme even though you don't have snow. Yeah, mm. you could. You, I don't know, freeze some snow. <laughs> like you snow can. ice or something. Anyway, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we hope you have fun. Playing and learning with your kids. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye.